Hi everybody and welcome back to my studio for the third layer which it will be the final layer of this painting called Passion 2 and uh, you will see that I have mixed up some clear resin it looks kind of cloudy uh, I don't know if I was hungry but I kind of whipped it as I was mixing it and I created a lot of air within the resin and that's what you're seeing lots of air bubbles um, those will be removed with the heat, uh, with the blowtorch when I hit it, but uh, so I'm not overly concerned. So what I'm doing is, if you had seen the second layer that I um, applied, which was a partial layer, I created the curved colors that are popping on your screen right now to the right, and then again towards the middle. Now, I kept studying the painting, trying to kind of figure out um, what am I missing here. And because uh, it's still, well, it, it was fine in its own right until I looked at it, sat next to the original passion painting, which had a lot more um, movement within it. And it was more dramatic, I guess. And so the two pieces, although they were in the same palette, they were very different to each other. And uh, so I decided I needed to, I wasn't quite finished. So what I'm doing right now is the second layer was a partial layer. So where resin was not applied during that second layer, I've just poured into those areas. And now, now that I know that I have an abundance in those relief areas as such, I'm coming behind and um, I'm applying resin to the rest of the piece. Because essentially, this last layer is what, gonna, what resin artists refer to as a flood layer. And a flood layer is where you finish your piece with um, a nice clear resin layer and that's what I'm doing right now. So I'm making sure that the whole painting is getting a nice protective clear coat and uh, I haven't torched the resin yet so um, right now I'm able to move it around and uh, kind of manipulate it into the area and make sure that every part of the painting is receiving some of this new flood coat of resin. And a lot of my art, um, I usually typically always apply a clear flood coat of resin at the end. And the reason why I do that is because, first of all, it creates depth, but also, which in itself creates an effect for my painting, but it also gives it a really beautiful finish and the painting is very protected. So um, it's, it's a good addition to, it's not essential, but I personally feel that, uh, especially if I'm selling my art, that the end painting should be the best quality I can provide to my to the people that are purchasing my art and so I typically do always add a last clear coat of resin. Now once I have all this resin down I am going to add a little last element of the Mayron gold body paint and I I had decided what I well what I had decided is if you see the two areas that are predominantly kind of brownie gold, not with the lines going through, no layering as such particularly, um, those two areas, I decided I like the background um, colour, and I'm torching right now, so as I torch, the air bubbles will release. And uh, so the colours will start to pop and any cloudiness that appeared in that clear resin will be lost because 
um, that it was only air and the air is being released by the uh, blowtorch. So the, those two areas that are predominantly the background color still, what I'm going to do, what I decided to do, is I need to come back and have some component of this painting that would tie it to the original painting called Passion One. And there is a video for that one. Um, Passion One is uh, was an interesting painting. If anyone anyone has watched the video, it was it was a struggle for me. But it actually was in the end painting was very beautiful, but it had a lot of gold and a lot of movement and a lot of um, kind of lacing out of that gold Mayron body paint. So I decided I would come back with that Mayron gold uh, metallic body paint in clear resin, which is what you're seeing me put down now, and introduce it into the two areas that actually have no, um, just have background color. And I'm just coming behind right now over that Mayron and I'm actually applying some clear resin. And now I'm spraying some 91% alcohol, which helps disperse the, uh, the, the paint or the ink, whatever it is that you've applied in the resin. It helps disperse it. So now I have... Uh, I'm ready now to kind of feather it out and I'm going to do that with my uh, heat gun. Now the heat gun is a, is a useful tool because if you apply heat and obviously air, a bit like a hair dryer as such, although, um, and some artists do use hair dryers, but it's essentially, it's as similar as a hair dryer, it's just probably not as powerful, but the... Um, this one that I use has various um, kind of power with the flow of air. So, you know, you can have it quite, quite subtle or you can have it quite powerful. But also will blow out um, cool air through to hot air. So I can actually, because if the resin gets too warm, it starts to cure. So if I'm trying to disperse out a color using this tool and I notice that the resin is getting very warm I can turn the temperature down on my heat gun so that I don't add any more heat and hopefully lengthen the um, the resin life to the workability so I'm coming down that Mayron and I'm dispersing it out And what I'm trying to do is kind of build um, a disperse out of like cells using that Mayron gold metallic paint, body paint, because that is what you see in the original painting. So although they're very different, I wanted there to be some comparison. I, I wanted the two to be able to sit next to each other and have truthfully have some kind of relationship from a design point perspective and uh, other than just the fact that I use the same palette and I did mention on my previous uh, two videos layer one and layer two that this is a wooden panel made for art um, so it's not your typical canvas uh, which is gessoed etc and I purchased this wooden panel from Dick Blick Art Supplies online. And uh, I, this is an unprimed uh, panel that they, they sell. And they sell it in various sizes from very small to very large. But this one is an 18 by 24 inch. So I'm feathering out the uh, Mayron gold. And at the end of the video, I will um, share some photographs of the finished piece with some close-ups of the Mayron gold so that you can appreciate um, 
the design it gave me towards the end. And now I've got to be careful here, so I'm applying some more Mayron Gold into that space there. But I have to be a little bit careful because I don't want to introduce too much and it bleed over because it's essentially connected via that top layer of clear resin. I don't want it to kind of bleed over into the rest of the colours to the right especially. So I brought through two uh, lines of Mayron Gold using a popsicle stick to apply to apply um, a certain amount to have some control over how much I actually put on the canvas. So what I'm doing right now is I'm blowing kind of upwards because I'm trying to be very careful and although I want the Mayron to disperse out, I don't want it to... Um, go too far out. I don't want it to start coming over the rest of the painting. When I came to the end of this painting, I, I thought to myself, that's it, I'm not going to use these colours again for a while. Um, but I have another painting in my mind uh, using this palette, so I don't know if it will be my next painting, but I'm sure I'll be revisiting this colour combination, only because, um, for whatever reason, it works very well. So I'm just teasing out the uh, gold mayron paint and uh, creating some dispersing out and some interesting uh, design and uh, just in contrast to the very, the, the kind of the shape and lines that are to its right essentially, but also to its left. So I started with Mayron and it gave me a lot of trouble as far as um, trying to almost control it on the piece. And it certainly gave me that again on this one on layer one. But uh, I still can't get away from the fact that it is a good product in resin. It does create some really beautiful dispersed out kind of cells and uh, movement within the piece. So it's... Um, it kind of gives a very good kind of texture and uh, kind of waves and sows and sort of lacing. It really does all that. So it is a great product in resin. It's just, just be mindful that if you are using Mayron metallic gold, that it is a very lightweight product in its, um, its composition, its, its actual... Um, weight as a material so when it goes into the resin it will sit on the top layer or always be closer to the eye so if you are introducing it into your resin art just know just be aware that if you are going to put it over the top of other colors it will stay over the top of other colors it it doesn't appear to have any relationship to the colors around it it just is very predictable. It wants to be on the top, which is which is fine if that's what you want. But um, that's not always what I want. Sometimes I want an interchanging quality to the material. I want it to, you know, partially be underneath the red and partially above it. So 
it doesn't appear you can do that with the Mayron Gold um, body paint powder. But I'm going to keep working with it. Um, and maybe I have just haven't quite, you know, broken the code of Mayron use. And, um, and, and I'm sure that I'm getting better with it. The first time I used it, I found it completely uncontrollable. And now I'm starting to realize um, it does have some great qualities. And one of the great qualities I will add is if you look to the right and you see that curvature of red and those subtle gold lines, that's me coming behind with a popsicle stick and just kind of lacing it through, you know, applying that very fine layer. It is, when it's in that kind of design, it is incredibly beautiful. It's very sparkly. It's kind of crumbly. It's, uh, you know, it really has a lot of um, reflective quality about it. So I, it's definitely going to, I'm going to definitely continue to use it. And I see that Mayron have a few colors available in their body paint in the metallic series. So I'm going to, uh, dabble more into Mayron in future videos um, and go ahead and order a couple more colors. Um, I'm quite interested to use the silver. And they also have a kind of a light lavender color. And uh, I thought that would be kind of interesting too. So I'm definitely going to check those out. So I'm, I'm applying my last um, torching of the resin this is the final layer, so I'm going for that really beautiful flawless finish. And, uh, and I'm just applying a little bit more resin to certain areas. And um, resin has a self-leveling quality. So as it cures, it will mostly provide a, quite a flat top coat. I'm just now, I'm just going around the sides of the painting because some of the clear has, uh, you know, dripped over the side and some of, and a lot of the, the, the design did fall over the side. So the sides are finished too in this painting. So I'm just going around with my hand and I'm just lightly touching the clear resin to give it um, kind of a flat, nice finish. And uh, once I've done that, I will bring you in for some close-ups. Okay. So, as you can see, the gold... The red with the gold is just popping. It's just intense, beautiful color. And then in the uh, in the areas I've put the Mayron, see, it is kind of laced out and broken down and lots of waves, lots of holes like lacing um, and created some interesting extra design. There's the red with um, the gold and... Uh, some of the copper through it. There's the Mayron. See, there's the Mayron breaking down, kind of splitting out there. Really is beautiful over the top of the tattoo ink in the brown. And here it is. This is what I've just applied. I dispersed out in that clear layer of resin um, some Mayron gold body powder, and it's really beautiful. And it's given some relationship to the previous painting by creating a little bit of drama within the piece. So guys, thank you for watching and um, I'm gonna now show you some close-ups.